this is Dr. Osborne, board certified neurosurgeon. And I'm going to head this off at the pass because I'm already fielding questions about the recent JAMA study on aspirin usage for primary prevention of stroke. Drawing data from what's called the ASPI trial involving over 19,000 participants, the study found no significant difference in the incidence of the most common type of stroke, which is called an ischemic stroke, between the aspirin and the placebo groups. However, brain bleeding events were 38% higher in the aspirin group. Now granted, these numbers were small from an absolute standpoint, 79 versus 108 individuals, and statisticians have a way of sensationalizing things. But as a result, researchers appropriately concluded that the risk of brain bleeding outweighed any potential stroke reduction benefits. So they advise caution in using low-dose aspirin for primary prevention, particularly for older individuals that are prone to falls and head injury. The study instead emphasizes lifestyle modifications to reduce stroke risk and urges consulting with a doctor for altering aspirin intake. For secondary prevention, like after a heart attack or stroke, for example, aspirin's benefits generally outweigh the risk. My take? Well, I'm a big proponent of aspirin. This is clearly stated in the pages of Get Serious, and I haven't changed my stance since the book was published, and likely I won't. Aspirin has potent anti-inflammatory effects. And why is this important? Because the underpinning of age-related diseases is inflammation. Aspirin has been shown to reduce the risk of some cancers, may slow the progress of neurodegenerative diseases like Parkinson's and Alzheimer's diseases, and reduces joint pain, allowing people to be more mobile. And what does that translate to? A more willingness to move and exercise, things that confer health. Enough said about that. As the study authors advise, don't just stop your aspirin. Think about the myriad downrange effects, good and bad, before doing so. And remember, I'm the guy that operates on patients with brain hemorrhages. Not that you want one, but there are far more medications out there that cause us problems with bleeding in the OR than aspirin. And they don't have aspirin's anti-inflammatory or potential anti-cancer effects. Again, it's all about risks versus benefits.